Welcome back, Greg. Yes, sir. We're, we're rolling right along. Uh, I do want to make a little housekeeping note here. I know some people who are subscribed on various platforms, I was talking with someone today, they, they are using Spotify, and they're like, hey, is a new episode out. You got to click the bell inside of the app. I know for Spotify at least, and that'll like actually send your phone a notification. But also, I just want listeners to know the plan, Lord willing, we always will release a new episode on Tuesday. So hopefully Tuesday right. mornings, they'll be out and we'll be rolling. Yeah, and we're trying to be trendy. So anyone who's <laughs> listening to them from the past, the pilot episode was our initial launch. That's right. Then we had episode one. That's right. And that's how they do it in the real industry. <laughs> you know? right. so, we're getting official yeah, now. Now we're recording episode two. So, so anyway. That's right. Thank you for that <laughs> clarity. And also on the name, we want to be clear that you and I aren't the source of truth and wisdom. Like, no, we, no, we no, just, no. We just want to be clear that God, His Word, and His Son, Jesus, are the source of wisdom. We're just trying to glean from Him and hopefully bounce some things from Him. That's kind of how it works. That's what I love about who God is. That's right. He doesn't make wisdom hard to find. He says, hey, call out, go get it. If any of you lack wisdom, ask Him. He gives generously to all without finding fault. Like that. That's kind of the goal here. It's like, what? Yes, I want to be clear about that, too. Um <laughs> So, well, let's get yeah, into you're it. You're not truth, and I'm not wisdom, that's or right, vice versa. That's right, that's yeah, right. We're just not, so no one yeah, makes yeah, that act. No, yeah. yeah, I just want to be clear, man. <laughs> we, we do know the one who has it, though, and that's why that's right. we have these conversations, because we want to kind of pick each other's brain and kind of have conversations and, and hopefully connect those dots between the Word and the Scriptures and real-life scenarios. So, well, let's get right into it. I'm excited to share this conversation or have this conversation because I've heard you share this over the years. I've heard it on Sunday mornings. I heard it sprinkled maybe in conversations throughout as uh, during my time here. But there's themes, and one theme that, that you've hit on a lot that's really stood out to me that I think is really good is convictions versus commands. And that's interesting to me because sometimes I think we don't distinguish between those two things. Yeah. So I guess right off the bat, like why would you think – I don't know if we need to get into like, what are those things first? <laughs> yeah. How would you define a conviction? How would you define yeah. a command? I mean, that's probably a good place to start because, um, you know, to me, commands are very, very simple. Um, a podcast is truth and wisdom. I'm going to say that a command is anything in God's word that is black and white, crystal clear. You know, um, you know you're to give generously. People don't want to hear it, but that is actually a command, not a principle, mm. um, you know, or a, a conviction. Um, you do not murder. That's a command, you know. Mm. So those things in Scripture that are non-negotiable, that are very clear, these things are right, these things are wrong, those are all commands. Okay. Um, and, you know, we've talked about consequences a little bit. We can yep. do that in another format. But um, that's that's how I'm going to call a command, something mm. that is rock solid, clear in Scripture, right and wrong, do or don't do. Um, conviction to me, begins to move toward maybe it's an area that God's Word, um, maybe it's a gray area, um, maybe, it, you know, this is where we have to get, It's you got to be cautious. Because there's a lot of things today that someone would argue, well, um, how can you say there's a command not to look at pornography because there wasn't, there wasn't you know, picture pornography mm. in the old... Old Testament or even in the New Testament days. Well, actually, there were probably people drawing things that were inappropriate then. Mm. So it's not quite apples to apples. But, you know, we know what God's Word says about sex. We know what God's Word says about holiness. And so, you know, I, I don't think something has to be explicitly ban banned in Scripture for us to know that we have a command not to engage in it, yeah. okay? But there are lots of areas, like movies, for example. Mm. You know, I may have a conviction of, I'm not going to let my kids watch this kind of movie. You know, like, let's be honest, a, a, a command would be, don't watch any X-rated movies. Mm. I think we can... Mm intellectually agree, X-rated, what's their purpose? Their purpose is to, I would argue, um, demean sexuality, mm. make people stumble, you know, exalt something that's wicked, okay? But then you have a continuum. You've got G movies and PG movies and R movies, and you got R movies that are rated for violence, like, you know, Band of Brothers Mm. Has some R ratings. Well, there's one with nudity. Passion okay? of Christ. Got to skip that. But Passion R -rated. of Christ is rated R. So there's nuance there. Yep. You know, can we not see any rated R movies? Well, the legalist in us wants to make a rule that we never fudge on. Mm. Um, but I would say that's where it comes down to a conviction. Um, 
And that's the difference, you know. So mm. I think you have a command not to watch a movie that is wicked, okay? But you you should have a conviction not to watch stuff that, mm. you know what, if, if you start feeling the Holy Spirit giving you the... Um, the uneasiness that what you're seeing is not appropriate, that's when your conviction needs to cut out. Maybe you can't even articulate what you didn't like about yeah. it, but there was something that struck you wrong or made you feel nervous or nauseous or um, mm. ashamed. Well, that's a good point to say, I'm going to walk away from this. Okay, because that, that's where I would, I would love to pause for a second before we go further, because the question has to be, how do I know what is a command and how do I know what's a conviction, which is I kind of think where you're leaning towards how to find a command from what you're saying it's in the scriptures clearly there's those there's those action verbs like do do this don't do like you see these verbs they're for our benefit some so many times the bible get a bad rap for being a list of do's and don'ts it's obviously more than that it's a relationship but in yeah. that relationship there are certainly instructions and certainly those things are hey avoid this flee from this i think that's to our benefit but point is i think is it fair to say that we are going to learn commands from scripture like are there any, is we, there any? We better. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Is there anywhere else we would get command? Like that. That's what's given. We've got the Bible. We've got the Word, and it's complete. We've got everything we need. So that can be clear, right? I feel like so. The goal there would be. That's why I love about what you do on Sundays. It's always pointing us as a church family back to God's Word, and we hear you communicate that to us. I've even heard you say things like, "Hey, don't take my word for it. Like y'all read this. Like, Absolutely. like te- test test me." Like if, you, if anything, you, that's been like the reason I've been hesitant about this kind of a format because you don't want people to think, well, I don't have to study my Bible. I don't have to go to church on a regular, but I can just skip it and listen to whoever we want to name. And certainly I don't want to be on that list of whoever we want to name either. Look, we're not sufficient in any way whatsoever. No. And I, I don't believe in general God's word is pretty easy to understand, especially mm-hmm. on the explicit commands, the do's yep. and the don'ts. Is there a lot of confusion on some things there we could argue about? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, but man, if if we'd be honest, intellectually honest, 90% of mm-hmm. it's really clear. Who's the is, Who is the author that said uh, he was quoting about the Bible, it's not... Um, uh, I think it was Chesterton, or it might have been C.S. Lewis. I, it, it's no Mark it's, Twain. It's Mark Twain. Yeah, Thank Mark you. Twain. It's, it's not what the Bible. Um, it's not what I do understand, or no, it's not what I don't understand about the Bible that bothers me. It's, it's the what things I do. I, it's I what understand. I do understand. Yeah, and I I love that quote because he's it, honestly confessing I'm pretty wicked at heart. And yes. God's word makes me nervous because it knows it. Yeah, yes, yeah. like that was actually a very wise statement because that's being honest about the Bible and. So I think yeah. you're right. I, think I just that. want to ad- admit my error. I just put Chesterton, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. C.S. Lewis, yeah, just, and Mark Twain in the all, same bucket, and they probably don't. All. Two out of three belong, that but maybe great. not Twain. That was anyway. great. That was fun. <laughs> I like that. Well, I, I, I think so. Clearly, commands are given, and if we stay in the Bible and find one of the ways that, you know, where we're readers or hearers or memorize, meditate, I mean, there's, you know, we take in God's Word. And as we do, we're going to pick up commands. And I agree with you. You believe in Christ. You have the Holy Spirit. He gives you ins- Like You're able to put connect the dots and go, oh, like I get it. It's not all that complicated. It can be difficult to yeah. do those things, but not complicated. Like I am thankful that I agree with you. There is a small percentage that can be a little mysterious, but especially when you get into the commands, most of them the major- are very straightforward. Absolutely. So what would you think about convictions, though, because I guess that is where it gets a little hazy. And I do appreciate what you said about just because it's not in the Bible doesn't mean it's okay. Like, because you will hear people make that argument. I heard somebody say the other day, it's like, well, you know, cocaine, you know, is not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. But why, (laughs) but why would we consider that not only like, just all right, it's unwise. Like you are not going to benefit to any degree by doing that. It's like, that's going to hurt you, potentially kill you. Um, and so how do we do that? Well, then there's other parts of Scripture that can help us see that. And, yeah. and But maybe that's my question, is how do, you, how do you discern convictions? Because we can trick ourselves, and the heart is deceitful above all. And man, I can, I can want to make myself feel really good about this wicked thing I'm doing. So maybe that's more of a conviction, and I just don't share that conviction, and that's okay. And now I have the yeah. freedom to be over here. How do we navigate that? 
Yeah, and that's a it's a big challenge, I think. And I, I would argue one of the things we have to do right off the bat is to be honest about how we are as people. We we tend to fall into one of two camps, I think, you know, and it's funny because both these camps really make me nervous. So I, I, I'd like to think I have a biblical position on this. But, you know, we tend in the church, many people would accurately say, tends to land on the side of being Pharisees and that we have rules for rules and rules that aren't in the Bible. That we make up new rules and we, we have all kinds of rules and it's all about rules and and, and people, I think, extrapolate from that. So God must want us to be miserable because he has mm-hmm. all kinds of rules. Well, not every rule that Christians even advocates in the Bible. So be careful mm-hmm. just swallowing people's rules whole. Um, you know, and Jesus rebuked the Pharisees as much as anybody. So we don't want to fall in that ditch. But then the other ditch is there is no God. I am God. What feels good, I will do. Mm-hmm. Total freedom, total laissez-faire, you know, just unrestrained behavior, Mm. those two ditches are not what God's Word describes as being right and fair and and good for people. Mm. And so I think that's where you have commands where God is saying to the laissez-faire, everything goes person, no, these things are wrong. Um, And it's again, it's not just that God is a cosmic killjoy and He wants to tell us what we can and can't do, but God is saying, you do these things and it's against how I've, I've woven this world that you're living in and it will it will harm you in the long run like cocaine for example mm. you introduce any substance that one if you get it laced with something and like yeah. drug dealers care you could be dead for experimenting yeah. but two you can become addicted you can change the entire course of your life and wind up you know in a drug induced stupor and broke and in jail i mean you know mm. There's no good that comes from cocaine, mm. I, you know. So there's commands that clearly help us there, um, but also our heart has to be let's let's not let somebody else tell us what's right and wrong. Let's let God's word tell us. Let's learn who He is. Let's learn what His principles are. Let's get a, a fair picture of God, and let God fill in the blanks between commands mm. and. And the rest, and honestly, let God be the source of my convictions. And that's where I think this argument has to wind up going is God may convict me of something that he won't convict you of um, in mm. one of these areas of gray. Like your yeah. standards for for music might be different yeah. than mine um, and your standards for even what kind of movies you – you know, if, if you have a – an issue with with sex and temptation and and you've struggled with sin especially in your recent you need to be really really careful what what you mm. watch even on or what pay tv you yeah. Yeah, yeah you know you pay um but if if maybe that's not a ditch you've fallen into again i wouldn't you can't justify x-rated movies yeah. but maybe your standards is a, a little bit different mm. um you know that's where i think we've got to be honest about all this there is some nuance um, but we can't ignore commands. We can't do whatever we want to do. Um, and I think we have to let, you know, that's the other part of the argument no one wants to have. God is a God of holiness. Yeah. Okay. So if you're a believer in Jesus Christ and you want to reflect the image of God and you want to know Jesus, then holiness cannot be a word you're afraid to utter. Mm. Um, and you know what? Holiness raises the bar on a lot of stuff. You know, I think we, we live in a world that will say, well, if there's no command against it, it must be okay. Yeah. That sure doesn't sound like any definition of holiness I've ever heard. Yeah. You know, I again, I don't want to operate in a legalistic bondage, but your first answer can always be, well, it must be permissible unless God convicts mm-hmm. me otherwise. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know, how about... Um, we live in the what we know is right and the what we know is true. And when you come to a gray area, let's pray about it. And if mm. God gives you freedom, walk through that door. But if God checks, let's mm. say no. Is it fair to ask that it, because when we identified commands, we established, hey, these are pretty clear in Scripture, the majority of them. you can you, We can bring a mysterious one up for sure, but the majority of them, to Mark Twain's quote, very, very easy to understand. Difficult to live out, but not complicated. I see the temptation then to go, oh, so conviction is totally separate from that. But it feels like it's very important that we don't make the mistake of going, okay, commands from Scripture, convictions, just anything goes, to your point. Yeah. 
aren't they both still tied back to the word? They have to be, <laughs> like or, or they're just a preference. Because that's where we a understand. A preference and a conviction are two different things. Mm. Yeah, now you, I, I may have cut you no, off. No, no, that was just, good. No, I love that. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking because it, it feels like that. Like people want this. Like what does uh, Paul write? Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. You know, yeah. and, and and I think you, when it comes to conviction, so the gray areas, I've seen a lot of Christians that maybe they do, maybe they have rightly identified a gray area, but then what happens is they throw away other commands that would guide them in this so-called freedom. Yeah. So we we've used our freedom in Christ to totally dismiss the commands that actually should have led us and guided us. But, but we've, we've just called it a conviction. So I just get to do, I feel like that's a reality for a lot of Christians. They, they get a conviction that wasn't based from scripture. They felt like, and they, they deceived themselves a little bit. And now I'm ignoring the commands that are pretty clear on how to go about that. Yeah. I I think that's absolutely true. And I think part of that, it, it gets to the heart of the issue for, for most of us, the church doesn't want to admit that it has a different standard of behavior than the lost world. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if if you're not a believer in Jesus, um, you know, this whole conversation is a waste yeah. of your time. You know, I mean, God has no right to give me a command would be the idea. And mm-hmm. why would I, I wait on a conviction from the Lord for anything? Mm-hmm. Hey, I, if, if you're lost, then I understand why you would feel that way. Yeah. But if you're a believer in Jesus, don't... Too often people say, well, I have freedom in Christ. What they really mean is I can do whatever I want. And you just totally undermined, you have freedom in Christ. And I believe, well, I don't believe. I mean, I believe the Bible supports that freedom in Christ is is really a statement that's made. Again, you're going to have to let me do some, I'm going to give you biblical worldview without having to give you all the references. But, you know, freedom in Christ, one means you are not in bondage to any man any church, any denomination, any authority, any, you know, the papacy, the Southern Baptist Convention. Yeah. I mean, you answer to Jesus and Jesus alone, in a mm. sense. I mean, and so freedom means in Christ, you are your own individual. And you, there may be situations where you willingly enter into an arrangement with an organization or, or like getting married mm. in that sense. I mean, yeah. that's that's one thing. But also freedom in Christ, if you look in the New Testament, 90% of the time, the context really is from an evangelism perspective. You know, y- you have you have freedom so that you might share the gospel with someone, mm. um, so that you might not harm the cause of Christ. And w- we want to make it all about human behavior. It's like, no, we can't really have an intelligent conversation about freedom in Jesus mm. unless... You and I are united on the idea that we're sent to be evangelists. We're supposed to be winning people to Jesus. You, you just completely swallowed a sneeze, which I'm really yeah, proud no, of. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, yeah, yeah. distracting there. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I mean, freedom yeah. in Christ. People want to talk about yeah. freedom in Jesus, and they've never yeah. shared the gospel with yeah. anybody. Um, yeah. So yeah, eh, you've yeah. already you you've broken that concept out of its mooring. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it is for freedom that Christ set us free. Like, that was the point. And then all everything, it goes like what? So that we could just do what we want to do? Is like, I think there's a bigger yeah. picture to it than this. Yeah. So, no, I like that. And I think I think it's challenging because we are going to have, and you referenced this earlier, when we do find those convictions and they can be tied to Scripture, we can land in different places. And, and this is where there's tension because... Even in commands, even in a command that's given, the way that the Lord leads you to carry out a command and me out a command could look different. That's right. That can create conflict in the in a, in a church and in in a, in the body of Christ. And I've seen that. What are some things that you think can help? In I mean, there's check and balances. Like, are our convictions tied to Scripture? Are they biblical? Like, okay. But oftentimes, the mistake I've seen people make is there's an expectation that people would do it the way that I'm doing it. Like, hey, I've got this conviction, and all y'all need to get on board and come with me right now. Yeah. They may not say that out loud, but that's the attitude you get. So there, there's two sides of it. It's the, it's the hey, I'm, I got freedom in Christ, and then really they just want to go do what they want to do. And so there's that tension. There's also the tension of someone's actually trying to do some good things for God, and they do have a legit conviction. They're going for it. 
And now they're putting a demand on everyone else. Hey, y'all need the same thing I got. Yeah. And so there's those two tensions that I see when it comes to convictions. How can we help one another with giving each other some space? Like, are there some tips to, I mean, obviously just to a, a know that there can be different convictions, but are there some things you would help just encourage people as they, as God does convict them to carry out a command in a way? How do we give each other freedom, even if it's both tied to Scripture? Yeah. Well, I think pride is the biggest issue that makes that almost impossible to navigate because, you know, the there's an old statement, um, what, God made man in his image and man returned the favor, okay. you know, yeah. and, and I think that's what we do when it comes yeah. to convictions. I have convictions for how I order my home and, and what I do as a husband and what I do mm. as a dad. Um, they're all based on, I, I want to argue, biblical principles, but I don't think they necessarily apply to everyone else's home. You know, now mm. again, non-negotiables. Let's go there. We're gonna, I'm gonna fight that fight over uh, over a command in scripture. Yeah. But on some of these convictions, it, it's good for me in my house and. Um, but I'm not going to go to somebody else's house and say, I, I can't believe you're not doing this this way. Mm. Um, there's some, there's pride in all of us that not only do we fall in the ditch of rejecting any of God's rules, because there is no God, we want to think like that, but then we come to Jesus and we're like, well, then um, everything I think must be God's best for everybody else. And again, we're, it's the same sin. It's like, yeah. it, it's so much pride. And so, you know, that's the point of, of convictions is that, in the bride of Christ, there's so much, um, there should be so much diversity mm. that God may convict certain individuals certain ways, and He may yep. not convict other individuals the certain ways, but also even God knows who we are, and He knows how we think, and He knows our proclivities, and He knows the ditches we might fall in, and you know, He may give me freedom in an area that I have no temptation in. Okay, mm. he may not give you freedom because he knows yeah. he sees a cliff no that you yeah, don't see. Right. You know, I mean, and yeah. I can't see it, and you can't see it because we're not God. And so we've got to learn how to quit arguing about those things mm. and dividing the church and dividing a body over them. Um, we need, you know, major on the majors and minor on the minors, and mm. um, we just really struggle with that. Mm. And uh, again, most of it's arrogance. And um, you know, I, I just I, I've reached the point in my life where I've realized how many years. I've been arrogant, but also uh, it's almost the first thing I look for now. I mean, I hate, hate to say it, but if, if someone comes across brash or arrogant mm. or know-it-all or demanding, especially over things that are um, gray areas, mm. they may be right for them, but they're brushing, brushing everybody else with it. That just makes mm. me nervous um, because, I mean, God says he hates pride. So that sounds to me like even being prideful about certain convictions might get you in a lot of trouble. Yeah. You know, so. That's fair. I'll, you know, that's a great challenge and a great thought. And it's sobering, right? Because I think you're right, you know, and I appreciate you saying that. I, I think of uh, Romans 14 as always, you may have introduced me to that chapter as far as I was working through some gray area issues in my 20s. And I think I saw, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're the one. Hey, man, you need to go to Romans 14. So I would certainly encourage our listeners, is if it is a gray area, like I don't like that's some incredible wisdom in God's word that and yeah. paints a really good picture because you do see the downfall of two things that can happen. I think the scripture says something like, you know, one is looking down, like one is looking down at someone and the other is judging. It's like we've fallen in different places, like whether it be movies or whatever the example, music, whatever we want to, uh, you know, talk about. So the one is saying, well, they're judging the one going, how dare you? You know, you're, you're wrong. You should never yeah. do that. And the other is looking down at the other going, well, y'all should feel freedom to do this. You know, and you tend to see that because it feels like pride. You're, you nailed it because it's like pride is causing them to drive there. Yeah. And I, I think what's always fascinating about that chapter to me is we we tend to think I think in general in the church we we assume that the person with all the rules and behavior and standards are the strong but in that text the strong believer in a sense what's implied there the stronger regarding the weaker the stronger is actually the person that doesn't have a rule book that they whip out on every mm. occasion and say do this don't do that i mean they're not adding rules to god's word that don't exist the stronger one is the one who's 
content in Christ, and he navigates a situation with openness and prays mm. about it and lets the Spirit direct and doesn't rely on his mom and daddy's rules. And, you know, he relies on Scripture. The weaker is the one that has rules where there are no rules. Mm. And I just think, again, I, I don't want to... I think of churches that are real restrictive about worship. I mean, in yeah. terms of what instruments can... I mean, yeah. find me that rule, you yeah. know? Where'd that rule come from? And you can chase that rabbit, but... Um, when we start adding rules, that doesn't mean we're stronger. It means we're weaker. Mm. Um, weaker. But at the same time, when we start ignoring what's clear in God's Word, that doesn't make us stronger. Yeah. That makes us weaker, too. And so it's balance. And, you know, any time I'm going to have a discussion about balance, I'm going to say there's one really good a balance in, example of balance in Scripture, and His name is Jesus. Yeah. You know, yeah. there are other human examples that probably show us how to navigate the mm-hmm. flesh better or more vividly in that, I mean, Jesus was altogether righteous. You know, yeah. Jesus didn't have convictions that weren't biblical. Yeah. Jesus didn't uh, mess up in the gray areas. Jesus is perfect. Okay. Paul had some warts. David had some warts. Yeah. We can. So sometimes maybe that picture of balance actually comes better. How about a Peter? Peter messed up. Yeah. I mean, at one point, Peter refused to get rid of his Jewish convictions, and he, he wouldn't eat anything unclean. Mm. Guess what? It completely hampered him when it came to sharing the gospel, mm. and God had to give him, you know, we think, oh, he had a vision. No, I think he was chastised in a mm. vision. You know, you're behind yeah. the times. You're not he, listening to what my son said. You're not being open with the gospel. This rule no longer applies. Get over it. Um so we can probably That's learn good. from Peter a little bit That's there, good. you know. Well, there is a there's a beautiful thing that happens if we give each other freedom to follow convictions, because if even if you look at the body of Christ, and you know all the scriptures talk about each member is kind of has its role to play and its part, and it all of it together like works. Yeah. But if you have everybody saying like, "Hey, we're hands," like y'all all need to come be hands because we're you know we're we're rocking over here, like y'all all need to do this. Then then what are we like? I love that passage. And to me, it applies in some ways because, well, it's a great parallel, because as our church, people are going to have a interest for, for the way they were brought up, the things God's put on their heart, the, the experiences they have of life, the things God's given them a passion for, a skill set to help in. And if everybody jumps on the same train, then we're missing out on impact in other, yeah, other it's areas. It's not the expression it's supposed exactly. to be. Exactly. So what's really cool is if we can give each other freedom to be like, man, and just celebrate one another... And those convictions be like, and instead of, it's almost like there's a rivalry going on. It's like if someone starts to share about something they're really passionate about, we all of a sudden feel like we got to get them, you know, you no, 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 let's come over here. It's like, wait a second, let's just celebrate that they're passionate about something that has, that's connecting God and people and let's cheer that on. It does feel like we've got to give a space for that. And I certainly see the, um, a place for that in the body that we, we got to be, give each other space. So. Yeah, and I think it makes us it makes us better and makes us stronger. And even, you know, if you can live with some of that, it, it challenges not what do I believe, because, again, I think that comes down to commands, mm-hmm. but it helps us, well, why am I doing what I'm doing with my house and my home? Because I see maybe people that are more rigid than I am or yeah. have different rules about this, that, or the other. Um, you know, social media is one. Mm-hmm. Um, we've always been in the camp of it's here it's readily available. It's you're not going to be able to navigate the next generation if you do not understand how to use the cell phone and and mm-hmm. technology and things. So our our position was rather than denying it to our children, mm-hmm. um, we're going to try to introduce healthy boundaries and we're going to watch them as they learn with it and we're going to discipline them when necessary. But we want them to learn how to interact with a world where mm-hmm. this exists. Yeah. And what age? Well, that's another debate and all that. But the answer cannot always be for everyone, nothing ever, period. Well, um, I I think like this podcast wouldn't exist if our church didn't believe in utilizing technology and the internet and uh, media. And, you know, I mean, so it's like there are some benefits. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, there's there's some. And that's, I think, the challenge of, of for the church is. How can we use neutral technologies for good mm. rather than just always condemning it as bad? It, yeah. It's neutral. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and that's where I think if we're really born at what's a command, what's a conviction, well, if it's neutral, I man, we can have an intelligent argument. Yeah. 
but let's be honest about what's what's not neutral. Mm. Like, you know, yes, the Bible gives you freedom to say drink. Well, but have you ever met a person who's better because of their their alcohol or intake? Made better or the, decisions. Made as better you said decisions. Was, I love their you alcoholism. Said. You know, and again, hey, I'm yeah. I'm jaded in this area in that my extended family, we have damage from people who ruin their lives yeah. because of alcoholism. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, we can do this about gambling. We can do this about um, various things. You can't tell me it makes you better. Mm. So it's not a gray area. Mm. You know, something that brings harm, um, something that is statistically proven um, to ruin lives and mm. cause bankruptcy or, you know, again, I don't yeah. want to talk about all the casino, yeah. but nothing good comes from casinos. And yet yeah. people want to say, well, you know, it's it's entertainment. You go to a ball game, I go to the casino. Well, that's not exactly a fair comparison, yeah. you know. Because yeah. one guy says, "Be a good steward with your money." Mm. Um, going to a ballpark and watching something that is is neutral in terms of its value, and eating a hot dog, mm. and being there with your family, I think I can describe to you how that has redeeming values. In fairness, I don't see billboards or ad whenever you hear an ad for like uh, I know sports betting is real big. There's sports shows I follow and listen to, and they always are promoting. Oh, yeah. And and but it always is followed with what. Hey, if here's you a one eight hundred number. I don't yeah. hear that with baseball. Hey, if you find yourself too addicted to baseball, call this number. It's like we don't get that warning with watching baseball and eating hot dogs. So yeah, and then people are like, "Well, I don't gamble. <laughs> I just go there to eat the food because it's really cheap." It's like, but you're enabling, yeah, you're enabling this industry to prey on people and and to yeah. cause bankruptcy and to get them drunk, send them home in their car and have car wrecks. And it's uh, you but know, I think that's it's where, like this is not neutral, but, but people think, want it to be. I think you just identified a key point to this conversation, which is most people want to move everything to conviction. They do. Yeah. I, I mean, I, th- I really think that's where we're at. We, we, and, and, and then, then anything goes, I mean, really, because if there's no source of a standard and of God of holiness, if that's not there, then we just all get to nilly willy yeah. choose what we want. And I think that's, that's crazy for me to think about. But I, as you talk, it's like that, that is where we're at. It is. P- people yeah. would people don't want commands, and that's why I I don't like that people give the Bible a r- bad rap for being a list of do's and don'ts because I don't see those do's and don't. I see those there. By the way, I thank God for those things because if I listen to it, it actually is for my benefit and my well being and for my family's well being. Like a, a a husband who is faithful to his wife. This is all commands, by the way. He gonna be a much better husband. Yeah, he a much better yeah. father. Like just be faithful to your wife. Like just start there. That's biblical. It's like, I, how how would I not celebrate that do and don't? Right? It's like, yeah, I don't I, I understand don't. it. So yeah. again, I think that's it's an interesting conversation that I and you start sharing. It's like that's what we've done. Yeah. Everyone wants conviction. We we don't want the commands. Yeah, that's too and, harsh. And then I think you know, especially if, if you're biblical or you're you're trying to be godly. It, the response is always, well, that may be, that's okay for you, but don't tell me how to live my life. Mm, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, hold, hold on. You know, again, now, if you're a member of our church, there are standards that we have that we're going to try try to enforce. If you don't like those standards, you can move along and go somewhere else. Fine. Yeah. I'm not trying to tell anyone in our community what they can or can't do. Um, but I am saying I believe that God and the standards of the Scripture would indicate this is a bad idea, mm. and I'd just like everybody to slow down and think about that before <laughs> we right. just walk down. You know, right. I, I have no power to stop something yeah. or to make it not happen, or you know, I, I have the power for me in my house. I'll never walk in the doors say we get a casino, but you know, that's what's so astonishing to me is like you can't even push back a little bit and introduce mm. a thought that conflicts with someone's freedom, yep. you know, and, and I, I don't know, it's just, it's intellectually dishonest, the world that we're living in now because of that. And, yep. you know, I, I think one last example of this whole, you know, the way we've gotten on this, say dancing, Yeah. you know, I, it comes up, I, I went to a, a beautiful wedding this past weekend for um, a family member and, you know, they had a little dance at an, an all, you know, a venue out in the middle of, yep. of beautiful place. Um, and, you know, we here at the church, we don't have dancing at, at weddings. Well, um, technically we have some bylaw written like 1918 that banned <laughs> dancing, you know, it, it's not currently active, but, you know, dancing, I don't have any, there's no moral ban on dancing. Now, I think we can all agree there is dancing that exists that 
we it's shouldn't like be participating. Music. There, there's yeah, music exactly. that builds up and there's music yeah. that tears you know, down. And here's the challenge. This is what people don't understand. If, if we lived in a world where a wedding would just have a daddy-daughter dance that's appropriate, man, mm. that'd be awesome. Um, and maybe, um, a, a, obviously, a dance, the first dance between yeah. husband and bride. Man, that, that would be great. Yeah. Okay? But see, here's the funny thing. <laughs> we allow music at weddings, but guess what? Every song that's going to be played yeah. has to be signed off on by one of our staff members because people want to bring in appropriate music. Yeah. Again, I, we're not talking about playing some innocent number that's yeah. upbeat as they leave. We're ta- they're going to be the F-bomb getting dropped at our sanctuary. We can't do that. <laughs> Same thing with the dancing. If if we lived in a world where people were respectful of what's mm. common sense intelligent, we wouldn't have to say no dancing. Mm. But as soon as we allow it, every time there's a wedding, it goes a little further and a yeah. little further and a little further. And it's like at some point, um, it'll be out of control, and we're going to have people scantily dressed, you know, yep. playing salt and pepper, and we're out of bounds <laughs> so, now. You know, what I mean, bro, I love how you uh, just took it back to like the '90s on that one. That was, that was, uh, that was know, awesome. I've seen drill teams performing, to, and okay, it's like fair enough. Who yeah. who signed off on that song? Yeah. You know, Angel the Centerfold. Anyway, it's yep. like this should not be. And so to prevent from having to fight all those fights, it's just like yep. we just won't do that. Which is a good um, lesson of humanity, which is why I think that's an important conversation. We we tend to, if we, we A, want to shift everything into conviction, and then as we're in conviction, that tends, it, the more disconnected we are from the Word of God, it's just a slippery slope. Like, we're just going to go, go, go. Yeah. There's, I mean, yeah. It, it only, I mean, because if you break that down, like even with alcohol, like, at some point, like, and everybody's got to figure out, you know, you said that from the pulpit, like, hey, I'm not saying it's a sin to drink. Obviously, Scripture doesn't say that. Drunkenness is a sin. Yeah. Alcohol is not the sin. Um, but somewhere in that, like, everybody in the conviction, people want to use that, and they just push, push, push. Yeah. And how many times in those convictions that we have do we end up disengaging from what's crystal clear in Scripture? So I feel like we got it. We got to have checks and balances, which is why I love a conversation like this because it's a check and balance to say okay are my convictions still within the bounds of scripture because if we, if that's all, like there's no conviction that's going to be right before god that's going to be out of bounds of scripture true like i mean yeah, that's true like i feel like that's a decent check and balance also connected to a local church like we want to be connected to each other whether it be life groups or just friendships we have relationships we have connections we have cuz it's nice to you can check and balance with somebody hey what do you think about this? How did you do this? And sometimes we can ask those questions, whether it's parenting, alcohol, whatever it might be, just to learn from each other. And I, I love that you identified pride because I think that can keep us from actually getting to a really good place with our convictions. Uh, humility will allow us to go to someone and be willing to say, you know, I might be off on this. Hey, you know, Greg or Arlo, like, what do y'all think about this? Like, I, I this is what I've been doing. Like, is this good? Y'all think, you know, having checks yeah. and balances. I, I think that's good. The Word of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, it's like God designed it that way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, He knows what He's doing. We just, man, there's just so many pitfalls for us, I think. And again, we we don't like to have intellectually honest discussions about mm-hmm. a lot of this either, because mm-hmm. even, well, so the church says that all dancing's bad. It's not actually yeah. why we have the rule or what we say, but that's yeah. what we get accused of. And, yeah. you know, so um, it's it's the way it is, you know, and, yeah. um, but we're going to, we're going to keep trying to do as best we can what's yeah. right. And, and even, you know, in a church environment, I do think we have an obligation to celebrate the good. And so like, you know, we're very, we're, we have a policy that says what kind of marriages we will have in our sanctuary and mm. even more stringent on what kind of marriages can I do as mm. senior pastor. Yeah. Not not that God doesn't make a way forward for someone who's struggled and, and been divorced or, you know, but it's we want to exalt what's best and what's right. We, mm. we want it to be on its highest platform. Mm. God can, can make a way with the other and yeah. you know he makes beautiful things out of messy things but you know again the church should exalt what's best and what's right and mm. we just we can't have a nuanced discussion anymore in our culture people just react and they push mm. back and the pride and the anger and um it, it's it's unhealthy so i'm hoping we can keep having intelligent yeah. conversations on this podcast yeah. and um you know we, we may get boycotted Okay, no, no. you know, we've been boycotted before, but right. hopefully no one will break in and try to stop us from communicating. I so. mean, you know, for <laughs> as of right now, we have a freedom to do that. Uh, I did see that uh, Elon Musk was warning about uh, 
Apple's new integration of AI into the the operating system. Yeah. He thinks that that's super dangerous. So I'm curious. I haven't yeah. read much about AI it. AI might shut us down. That gets know? my attention. But yeah. no, I, I love it. And I love these conversations. And I think that's good. And, you know, I would encourage all our, all our church members or listeners just, you know, navigate that. But always make sure it's tied to Scripture. To me, that's like the, you know, you'll say it from the pulpit, like annoyingly biblical. But it's not annoying to me. It's like I kind of want to camp out there. I was yeah. like, I'm, I'm good with that. Like, that's my, I've lived long enough to know, man, I'm, I'm pretty, I can be pretty wicked pretty quickly. So like, I need that. Yeah. So I appreciate yeah. it. I've used some bad phrases like slobber knocked. No one knows what that one means, but annoyingly biblical has stuck. So yeah, it, I'm yeah. good with that yeah, too. Good. So. Good. Well, I appreciate it, Greg. And until next time. Yes, sir. Man, God bless you guys.